State of Decay 2 stream. Uh, we've got several of us here today. We've got Wonder over here, who is our communication director. And let's see here, we've got me. I'm Jeffrey Card. Uh, I'm a designer on the game. And over here next to me, we have got Jeff Salt, who hey is a gameplay programmer. Hey there, how are you guys doing? Uh, so Jeff is going to be playing the demo with us today, and uh, we are going to be talking specifically about like uh, the explosions in the game because yes. that is uh, Jeff's wheelhouse. Uh, but you know, any questions you guys want to ask, we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, this is going to be kind of chill. We don't have a huge agenda today, so honestly, let's just go right into it. So I haven't played the demo build before, so I have absolutely no idea what we've Yeah, I was going to let you know about that. Yeah, so this, the PAX East build, especially uh, for Jeff, and but anyone else watching also, is that we kind of condensed 10-minute experience um, that we use at PAX East. So we're dropping you kind of in the middle of the game. Uh, it is randomized between a ton of saves for a time of day, exactly. bases, community. <laughs> so as we play through, you're going to see a lot of different stuff. You'll probably see the timer pop up, too. <laughs> yeah, so just pretend you're with us at PAX playing at the booth. Exactly. Uh, and Except that's you get to much... sit down, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, you guys get to chill. You can be you can be lying down in bed, whatever you want to be doing to watch us. And uh, yeah, but we get to sit down. Yeah, that's also oh, yeah. Pretty yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like, no one sits at PAX. So uh, yes, yeah, so we got Jeff here running around. So let's. Uh, what? So we're is this this is a warehouse base, I believe. This is. Uh, which which map are we on? Um. Can't tell are. from the inside. Meager is this Meager Valley? Okay, yeah, it looks like okay. We're in the middle of Meager Valley at the warehouse base, and you are playing as this woman who is loaded to the gills. Yeah, I've got a uh, shotgun, a couple of Molotovs. Used to have three, but then I uh, accidentally pressed the button. Um, <laughs> and a pipe bomb. <laughs> All right, so um, where's the supply locker on this base? Geek Domo announces that uh, he does not have pants on, um, and we, none of us have pants on either. Yeah, I so, don't. Yeah, Wonder, Wonder literally does not have any pants on. Yeah. and uh, I don't believe in them. <laughs> I try to maintain a certain level of professionality. So. <laughs> That's why he's in a kilt. <laughs> Where is the supply locker in this space? Uh, it is, I think it's just inside the door. At least I've been playing in Drucker, and in Drucker it's just inside the door. I don't know if it's the same in here. Because I want to know if there's like... Oh, I'm more totally used to... Go the opposite corner, opposite corner. Opposite I think it might be up there. Sorry, we've got so many bases and so many maps in this game, it's hard to keep track. Yeah. Yep, that's where it is in, in Drucker, and so... Uh... Yeah, there's um, an awesome like, like self-storage facility uh, that I usually like, to pick, uh, usually like to put my bases in when I'm doing testing work. Um, like you basically get to clear out a lot of the, the actual rooms where like, you keep storage stuff in and then get to put like, your workshops or whatever in there. Oh, ah, wait. Here we go. Here's the oh, icon. You found it? Okay. I found Actually, it. I just realized this, is, this isn't the warehouse. This is the brewery. Uh, right. So that's why I was, right. was getting confused. The brewery sounds like the base for me. Yeah, the brewery is, is kind of a favorite. <laughs> it's, it's got a couple of built-in facilities that I think people are going to like. And you can brew beer and trade with uh, enclaves there, right? Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, that's, cool. that's the main thing you do with, with, with booze in this game is you, you sell it to other people. Yeah. You can also, uh, certain forms of it, you can make into medicine and stuff like that. Mostly it's for uh, selling to other people. So I am hoping, because I'm the explosives guy, um, I'm hoping that I will be able to get a workshop up and running so that I can craft some stuff that are not just Molotovs and pipe bombs. But in the meantime, yeah, and uh, you know meantime. this demo resets every ten minutes. So if you run out of uh, if, if you run, run out of Molotovs, oh, you'll get some more when it restarts. All right, well. Uh, Garlic Burp wonders if Brant is having a spa day. Uh, Brant's having some kind of day. Uh, he's not into. He, he, he took PTO today, so. Uh, Oh my gosh! Just oh, he's definitely so getting a pedicure. Right. So tell us. Uh, so you you did not work on the original State of Decay. This no, is didn't. your first State of Decay. Yeah, I joined on Dead Labs about a year and a half ago. Um, got straight to work. Oh, come on, <laughs> I'm trying to talk here. Um, <laughs> um, I uh, joined on Dead Labs about a year and a half ago. Um, basically, started right in on uh, putting gameplay systems together. Um, so I played uh, the original State of Decay a bit. Um, uh, not a huge ton, um, mostly to try to keep myself relatively fresh so I can try to bring in new ideas. Yeah. Um, and yeah, got and put on the radio commands and the explosives pretty much immediately. And so, yeah, and fire was definitely um, problematic in the, in the original game, partly just because of resource issues. Like, it's really hard to put that many particles on the screen and to have them behave in interesting ways without just sort of 
running out of you know resources on the on the machine. Right. And so now that we're on the Xbox One and modern PCs, we had a little bit more we could do. Right. Um, <laughs> you so gotta just be amused by the horrifying deaths sometimes. <laughs> um, uh, take control. Oh, I have a mission to take control of Nanny. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks to the fact that we're on a more mo modern console this time, uh, we're on the Xbox One and the Xbox One X, and the fact that we are basically able to optimize for newer PCs, uh, we're able to get some really huge fire effects going. Um, so we've got uh, oh, five minutes left on the packs demo. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> So, uh, in addition to the Molotovs, we have like fuel bombs, which I think are also crafted, um, which are basically like Molotovs, except they are much bigger. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we also have uh, really cool things like thermite grenades, which are, I think you loot them generally from military facilities? Yeah, yeah you get them from the military. I think you, you might even, with very advanced skills, might even be able to craft them. Nice. Um, and you can use those. Uh, they've actually got a fuse because they're a grenade. Um, and then they just kind of cover a huge area in flame. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so fire in our game, it doesn't just, like, explode and set zombies on fire. Like, it spreads out and it adheres to things. Yes. Uh, that's one of the things that took me a little while to actually get going. But if you throw a Molotov at a wall, it sticks to the wall, it falls down. <laughs> and our Molotovs, they're kind of like a little flash in the pan, right? They, yeah. They're the fire goes away pretty quickly, but some of the other options stick around for a while. All right, all right, Nanny, I will be the one to, oh, I want to I wanna talk with you. Some folks oh, in the chat, by the way, we're, we're interested in the fact that you're using a mouse and a keyboard instead of a controller, which is what oh, we yes. usually use. I am, at heart, a PC gamer, um, and I have been trying to make sure that the PC gaming experience is as solid as possible. Um, I have definitely played enough games that were really obvious PC, or er, Xbox ports to PC, um, where the control scheme has been just kind of aggressively... <laughs> mediocre. Um, We're doing our best to, tr yeah. to try to, you know, not be quite on that in that extreme. Right. Um, one, well, I'll see here, somebody made a comment. Oh yeah, uh, Hansel Odolo asks, is this on a high-end PC that we're playing? So I'm streaming this from a high-end PC, but he's actually playing on an Alienware laptop that's yeah. a few years old. Uh, so he's not, we're, we're not really just amping up the, the specs of the machine he's playing on. He's playing on a, you know, it is a gaming PC, but it's a gaming PC that you didn't, we didn't buy yesterday, okay. so. I can't give you the exact specs because I don't know them, and also, I don't know, somebody might be uncomfortable if I did that. Um, so while you're killing that, uh, <laughs> ASQD Gaming asks, uh, are there any other really unique bases like the Bridge Fort that we can tell that we can talk about? Do you oh, personally yeah. have a favorite base? We just saw the brewery, right? Um, so not on this map. I tend to play on one of the other maps. Um, I mentioned the uh, storage facility before. There's oh yeah, self storage. Yeah, there's a drive-in theater as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you can get electricity going, I think I think we still have the facility in. Where if you can get uh, electricity going, and if you get the base upgraded enough, um, like the you can get the projector going, and you can actually <laughs> get that morale bonus for being able to show. Show, show um, movies and show stuff. Movies at night, yeah. So we're actually we're seeing some weird um, lag spikes here on on uh -oh. the streaming end. It's not happening yeah. on his screen. Yeah, his screen, the frame rate is really smooth. For some reason, um, I think my, my capture card has given us some trouble. So sorry about that. If it, it's looking like a slideshow to you guys, it's it's not happening in the game. It's happening uh, with our streaming setup. Can't do it. Let me see. I think maybe we're going closer back to normal now. Cool. I think it may have gotten going on this a little bit too late to actually be able to get to the play card. I think I've got like one minute left on the PAX demo. Oh, <laughs> so. we did get a request. Uh, somebody in our audience wants to see us at some point fight some humans, but it doesn't necessarily have to be you. Josiah could go after that too. Oh, if man. We... Do we have any hostile enclaves? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't during the demo. Uh, um, I think there might be, is that a red enclave up above to the north? Uh, no, this yeah, is just No, a, no, the other one. Oh, here. There, there's a red oh. enclave. Maybe we can set some humans on fire. Uh, I don't know if we have time, though. We might have to mean. do it after the next reset. Uh, yeah, it'll probably have to be at the next reset, because I saw the two-minute pop-up about a minute ago, so it's definitely going to kick me off. So uh, Alfred Ben asks, how easy is it to get the blood plague cure? Um, so you have to have an infirmary to do it. Um, and then uh, the plague samples that you make the cure from uh, get dropped by any zombie that is infected by the plague. And there's like, a chance that they're going to drop it. I typically usually have enough, but then I also, you know, farm them pretty hard. Like, anytime right. I see a plague zombie, I kill it to see if I can get a sample. Yeah, so 
hopefully, if luck will have it. Oh, god damn it! Lemmy <laughs> <laughs> Poo uh, says that Blood Plague sounds like a badass Iron Maiden song. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so sometimes plague zombies will drop these samples here. Oh, there we go. Perfect. And you pick them up, and you get a plague sample. Um, I don't know how many it takes to craft it's five, it. Five, I believe. Five? Okay. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> so. We're having trouble hearing you, Jeff. I think it's like, oh, no. like, what wonder keeps coming in and moving the mic. Uh, is, is my headset mic not? Plugged it's not in? your headset mic. No, it cool. is. It is the uh, the mic that's in front of your face. Cool. So I will lean in. <laughs> I will lean in and then do the blood plague part. Unfor run through. Unfortunately, all the sound tests are done by me, and I've got this voice <laughs> you can hear throughout the entire office, even if I'm locked in a closet, oh. uh, which I won't say whether that's actually happened before. Um, if but I need to project, I can project. You know, the, the, no, the most embarrassing part of my voice is the fact that um, uh, when I'm vomiting, I'm also really loud. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I once had a really embarrassing time at the office when I was suddenly hit with some kind of food poisoning plague. And I went to the bathroom to end, like, literally the entire office could just hear nothing but me vomiting in the bathroom. Um, I think it was right before you were hired, so you that, missed out. That went in an entirely unexpected direction. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this, if we're going to watch this, you know, stop zombie heads, just everything, everything's on the table. Okay. Wait, is this a different... Yeah, so you're in a completely different place now. So and now, oh, yeah, now we are in Drucker County. Okay. Yeah, this is this is the map that has one of my favorite... Bases? Bases? I think it's down here. Is it the the warehouse is right where you're... That's where the warehouse is, because that's where I've been playing at yeah. home. I, I love, I do love that warehouse. Yeah. I've got, I've got two big farm. In my, my game at home, I've got two big farms set up, and I've, and, uh, and I've got like a professional gardener, and I've leveled up the farm so much that basically, I'm like, I'm, I've got so much food now. I'm, just, I'm starting to turn it into fuel, mm. uh, just to, just to find something to do with it. Like Oops. Did I just hear? I think I just heard a freak. Oh god. Um, Estefoldo. Whoa. Oh, nice shot. PC gaming. <laughs> So yeah, Estefoldo, um, I've been playing the game at home on my regular Xbox One that I have uh, in my family room, and it's running great. Like, I, I haven't had any complaints about it. Um, you know, I mean, of course, you know, I, I'm an extreme nitpicker about our game, so I do find complaints. Uh, but yeah, as far as the performance goes, like, I, I haven't had any issues. So um, I'm pretty optimistic that folks are going to be happy with this, uh, with this game when they pick it up, even if, if they've got uh, an old school Xbox One, which is basically our min spec. I'm Away from, okay, there should, were cars you know, that I'm just walking away from. I'm not saying you should buy an Xbox One X just to play this game. But, uh, but I'm sure our publisher sure, would be very happy sure Microsoft did. would love it, yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, so John joystick. Awakens uh, on Mixer asks, do you have to play part one to understand part two? And I would say that is a resounding no. Mm -hmm. uh, that basically, you know, if you know that, if you've played part one, I mean, there's little Easter eggs and stuff well, that you'll get. But we do our best to make it so this entire story is comprehensible from the beginning. Even if you've never played the original, you have no idea what was in it. So, uh, Sheet Macaroon 60 on Mixer asks, uh, what is the most dangerous enemy? Do you have, like, between Juggernaut and Feral? Um, so, like, as you, as you saw just a little bit before, um, I'm actually pretty good at taking out the Juggernaut. If I have a shotgun or a, a handgun, because you can like really get those uh, those headshots super quickly with a keyboard and mouse, and that <laughs> takes a perfect aim. Um, the juggernaut actually like takes a while to get through, so unless I'm actually stocked up, like so so as the explosives programmer, I tend to find myself with a lot of explosives in my inventory thanks to the <laughs> debug commands that I am executing. Um, um, I even with a whole bunch of like explosives and flammables in my inventory, I tend to have quite a bit of trouble with juggernauts because. You can't just straight up kill them with a headshot. It'll stagger them, but their skulls are like thick and awful. So you have to actually do a whole bunch of damage. You have to stagger them. You have to actually get them down. So and you have to avoid all of their attacks in the right. meantime, which tend to be airy effect and right. hard hitting and <laughs> grab you and throw you around. Yeah. Even if you get in a car, they can knock you around. Yeah. Um, I think last time I tried just trying just running over a juggernaut, I think the juggernaut won. My car did not. <laughs> so for me, actually, you know, uh, 
as I've been practicing, I'm less afraid now of juggernauts and ferals than I used to be. The thing that actually screws me up is if I accidentally back into a bloater while I'm in the middle of a big fight, because the bloater gas will just take down your stamina and your health and actually leave you permanently injured. Not permanently, semi-permanently injured. Um, and, and so suddenly, like, everything else becomes twice as dangerous because that bloater hits you. Okay, sorry to interrupt. But oh, go for it. Where are the cars? Oh, uh, <laughs> I think we, you might not? have gotten a bet. So I think that they clustered the cars around the base so you could get one immediately and drive. I missed those. I just walked out of the home site and now I've been just kind of wandering toward my objective well, hoping that I will find a car. Let's, let's, let's try to explode some dudes. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to need to. Get off of me, please. Fire in the hole. <laughs> I solve problems. So sometimes... Uh, Sometimes you get lucky when you got an explosion near you, but sometimes uh, what, one of the reasons why you don't want to just set off explosions near you and your friends is they cause injuries. Uh, they cause injuries. Um, I was actually expecting that I was going to get some shrapnel out of this. Um, and I've <laughs> like, darn it, I didn't get any of that shrapnel please, I was looking forward to. I'm tired. I have no stamina. Please just let me, please just let me be. It's a pretty badass sword you got. It is. Um, can I get far away enough, fast enough? Nope. Ah, nope. oh. There you got go. a. <laughs> yep, yep. Now. There you go. You got an injury now. <laughs> uh, yeah. When you catch on fire, you have to stop, drop, and roll. That's right. remember. Always remember that. Stop, drop, and roll. So, yeah. Um. Uh, Marvel One on Mixer asks, uh, "Can you loot police stations?" And yes, we've got a couple police stations you can loot. There's right. even one you can live in. I'm pretty sure. Um, is there? I think there is. I don't one. know if I found that one yet. I think yeah. I think that one might be in Meager Valley. Maybe. Oh man, this is, I'm sorry, you know, we're supposed to be the experts, but there's literally so much <laughs> so freaking much content. content in this game. Yeah, and <laughs> I, in particular, being a programmer, I tend to be much more focused on, like, going through and solving specific problems. Like, um, we had a problem in multiplayer where occasionally if you set a zombie on fire, some of the other, uh, the other players would not see the fact that the zombies were on fire. They would still catch you on fire, but you couldn't see that. They would still be staggering around, but they wouldn't be visibly on fire. <laughs> so, like, I spent, you know, half a day going in and making sure, okay, yes, fire is properly propagating to all the clients. So it leaves me with a little bit less time to go through and, like, try out every single bit of content. So it looks like we're having some uh, streaming issues today. For some reason, I think my capture card is grabbing at a lower frame rate. Uh, I, I swear to you, when I'm looking over his no, screen, this is, this is totally frame rate fine. is buttery smooth. I'm not lying to you. I'm a terrible liar. <laughs> But you can see that for yourself when you pick up the game. So uh, it's going to come out uh, within a month now. If you, if you pre-order it, it comes out May 18th, which is so freaking close. Um, so yeah, you can, you can verify that for yourself. In the meantime, I'm really hoping my capture card starts figuring out how to uh, stop dropping these frames. Is there, like, a big valley between me and my objective? I, uh, I think there I'm gonna immediately might well be, yeah. Time. Because, because, <laughs> well, we can see the the beauty of the landscape oh, yeah. that uh, that our world builders have created. Because yeah, our environmental artists have done a fantastic job. There's so many parts of this map that you don't have a strong reason to go to, but sometimes I like to just get in a jeep and just drive around and like try to you know get to the places I'm not supposed to be. And there's always, I mean, you can tell how much time and effort went into sculpting these these rocks and just you know making making this place look really nice. Ah! So, one thing I love about fire in um, in the sequel, which what I, I don't think was the case in the original game, is that when a zombie catches on fire, they run straight at your face. So it's like you like uh, you think, oh, I'm destroying these zombies. In the original game, I think they held still and they're like, oh, I'm on fire. What? But in the new game, they just are like, I'm on fire. You're gonna be on fire, and they just start running right after you. Uh, so Coconut Kid asks that whenever if we get near the uh, the self storage, uh, he's really curious to see it. So if I think that's I think that's in um, Cascade Hills. I think so. So I, so I think if we get if we get the next map, the third map we haven't seen yet, mm. uh, if we get that one, we, maybe we can go head over there. Okay. We don't have our usual cheats, so we just teleport there. Uh, <laughs> and also, Dude. we're not going to show you the cheats. Uh, uh, can't access the console. Did you? <laughs> I don't know uh, why that wasn't the first thing I tried. Because there's <laughs> cooler explosives. Let's see here. 
Uh, so Comrade Cage uh, on Twitch asks, uh, not sure if this has been answered, but in co-op, when you're playing with friends, I know when you die, uh, see, and I've, I've just lost him in the chat, hold on. Uh, if you die in one, you die in both. But what about benefits? Can you earn supplies for your own campaign? Yes. Uh, so when you are uh, a guest in somebody else's world, you know, you're seeing their world, their story, their base, their community, and you've just brought one of your characters from your campaign. But every time you walk up to a supply locker, you get your supply locker. So you right. can bring your equipment from home. You can deposit equipment that you've, uh, that you've scavenged from the world. Um, the raw resources belong to the host, but all of the items are yours if you want to have them. Um, and so, you know, you can... Oh, let's get Wonder coming in here. So, yes, yeah, so you can definitely get plenty of benefits from playing um, in somebody else's game. Okay, so we've got a play card here. Uh, you can tell when you get close. Um, I'm, am I still too quiet? So, if, I wonder if maybe that mic is just not working at all and he's just only coming through mine. If that's the case, then, then what I need to do is uh, the, duck under the table and start messing around with stuff. So, I'm going to do that. Um... I can also move to my public speaking voice. Um, <laughs> one of the things I do on, on oh my god, one of the things I do on the side is um, I uh, DM Dungeons and Dragons at conventions. Oh, that's not the right. That's awesome. Well, well. Oh my god. Yep. Farewell, cruel world. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Oh, it's the final seconds of the PAX build. <laughs> we we kind of overwhelm you with zombies at the end. Nice one. Perfect dramatic <laughs> timing. Yeah. Um, put Great that in job. the trailer. Uh, yeah, one of the things I do on the side, um, I run Dungeons and Dragons thing at conventions, so um, I have the projection if you need me to kind of <laughs> yeah. project toward that. I microphone. could also I could also point this microphone a little bit more at you, and so so we're. I have definitely, um, I'm, I'm always learning new things that I need to do to prepare for a stream, and one of them is I need to definitely make sure that both mics, both are mics are working. Yeah, turn yeah. one off, turn the other one on, make sure that they're actually both working. Do you mind if I tap mm. this to see if people can hear it? Go for it. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get some reports from the audience. Wait, hang on. I recognize this restroom. <laughs> um, oh, is this the Field of Dreams? Yeah, this is nice. the... Uh, this is the baseball field. Um, Whitney Field. Right. So You can see all your little friends moving around there. So, yeah. The okay, they did hear your tap. So that mic is working. So. Excellent. I'll cool. just be a little closer to it. Um, oh, wow. There's the announcer thing in here. But we require power for this. Um, so I'm actually going to see if I can find, within the next 10 minutes, um, <laughs> some sort of... Uh, Power station. There's a there's a whole bunch of um, uh, outposts that you can claim uh, throughout the game. That do you have a thousand influence? It usually takes thousand fifteen hundred influence to get power. Um, I have three thousand. Yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. Speaking of which, uh, Bloody Sparta asks, do you need to spend influence in order to uh, get followers from your base and to and to pick up equipment and stuff like the original game? From your base, no. Um, uh, anything in your supply locker and any of your followers, you can basically just pick up. Um, but if you're interacting with other communities, or if you're trying to expand your base, um, if you, uh, not expand your base, if you try to claim a new base, um, or if you try to claim an outpost, it takes a bunch of influence. There's also, ah, the radio commandment. Oh, yeah, oh, we, we should talk about radio commands. I am, we don't have I am also unlocked. the radio guy. Um, Unfortunately, we haven't unlocked any, um, you know, you could, we've got, like, your useful, like, you know, locate food, locate medicine. Right. We'd have to find a military outpost in order to get you things like airstrikes. Like drone strikes, yes. Yeah. Um, or some missions that you can complete um, will give you, like, if you, uh, if you, if there's, like, a particularly, like, um, I don't know, technologically savvy uh, faction or uh, enclave, enclave, yeah. um, uh, then they can be like, oh, yeah, we, we have a drone that we can send up and it can do some scouting. Or, <laughs> yeah, we've got, you know, just we've we got got a bunch missile of missile lying around. I mean, <laughs> we'll just send a missile. Just let us, let us know where you want the missile. Yeah, I can confirm. Uh, Alexis is right, uh, Liamy Poo. Uh, fuel does have a purpose now, aside from just making Molotovs. You actually have to keep your cars fueled, uh, which is Speaking one of the challenges. Of which, I just walked away from my base without a car again. <laughs> That's the thing. You get so used to playing with the cheats here at the yeah. office. It's like, yeah. well, I can like, teleport anywhere. Why would I need a car? Do I actually have any on the... There's none scouted on the map. 
Uh, We've had, uh, yeah, oh, maybe they didn't give you any. I, I, I could have sworn that there were a couple of cards that usually also, showed up at the beginning. Oh, also, we, this is the map with the uh, storage facility. Oh, is it? Which I think is, which I think is, is it this one here, somewhere around there. Okay, go for um, Which means if I can find a car. I always thought that was in Cascade. A car! There's one. There's two. Uh, oh, we've had a few people compliment the graphics, by the way, which uh, we should uh, we should reiterate that whenever Josiah shows up, because um, he's he's uh, we're going to be spending some time with one of our artists uh, after after Jeff's done giving us his tour. Uh, the latest was uh, Fatal X Huntress uh, on Mixer is complimenting the graphics. We really appreciate that. Um, we got more questions about people just asking how the game performs on Xbox One, um, and. It's basically, I mean, like I, I've been saying, I, I've been playing the game at home, and I've got no complaints about it at all. I don't have any, like, specific numbers or stats or anything like that. That's not something I usually know. But mm. uh, but I've definitely been, you know, the game has been running great for me, and I've, I've been having a good time. So, uh, Bendig asks, any word on remappable controls? Uh, we don't have them Speaking. available right now in the demo oh. uh, that, we're, that we're playing. We, we disabled a lot of the settings and stuff so people wouldn't get bogged down in that stuff at PAX. But uh, we definitely do have a pretty, like, especially for a game that comes out on console, we've got a lot of remapping options um, mm. available. We spent a lot of time trying to, uh, nice move with that front end of your car. Uh, we, we've been trying hard to make sure that, that people have a lot of options there. And, uh, I get, you know, I need, to, I need to look into what is up with my capture card because it is, it's looking pretty slow again. Oh, I have a fuel bomb! <laughs> So, yeah, so I tend to use fuel bombs more as traps than as bombs, right? Like, I'll just put them not on the zombies, but in front of the zombies. Okay. Though yeah. usually... So, um... <laughs> no, Another no! The thing is the invulnerability cheat. <laughs> you get really used to being able to throw bombs really close to yourself. Oh, man, you're really close to death. Oh, this is great. Oh, and I've got so many injuries that I can't... Oh, and this is a pistol, too. Oh, it's a machine pistol. All right. <laughs> okay, here we go. We got the uh, got the frame rate back up on the capture card. All right, cool. Well, there's a play card here, and I happen to have a full comp of uh, pipe bombs. Cool. Um, so there is no chance that I'm going to actually be able to make this make it out of this alive. But <laughs> That's I, fine. That's fun to see too. What I do have is the absolute ability. <laughs> To, uh, oh. Hmm. Wasn't quite so I'm enough sure to that, take it down? I'm pretty sure that almost entire... Oh, no. Oh, that's right. Oh, no. That's it's, right. They burn it gushes you. gas right after you do a certain amount of damage they to it. They burn you, right. Oh, you are so close to death. It's amazing. Oh, well, hello. Oh. Uh, dodge. Your guy oh. never gives up. I love it. <laughs> I would like to use this, this bandage, please. Excuse me, excuse me. This is very rude. <laughs> so we have a, we've got a couple questions about military stuff. Uh, one person a while back asked uh, if there were military characters or military style enclaves. Where's my uh, car? There's my car. There is definitely a military representation in the game. Um, I, I think it would be difficult to assemble an entire group of people that way, but uh, that, that they're all dressed in fatigue, so. It's not that uncommon an outfit, actually, even for non-military people to sort of show up in fatigues. Nice death, by the way. I'm sitting here in the middle of talking, and then you're just, like, dying this horrible, tragic death. It was actually all my fault. Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, man, so dick is gone. No more dick. dick. Um, yeah, we don't have anyone in fatigues in this community. But I like this guy's vest. Um, yeah, it's pretty common to find that. And then... Um, uh, somebody also asked if we were going to have any like military-themed DLC, like Lifeline. Uh, we're not really giving any details in DLC right now. So, and and, and they, they already said, you know, I know you probably can't answer this, and that's true. We can't answer any questions about DLC right now, except for uh, we've already announced that there's a couple of DLC that exist, uh, and <laughs> they're called the Independence Pack and Daybreak, and we'll be able to tell you more about them once you know they exist more, uh, which is not right now. Mm -hmm. They're fun though. <laughs> There's some cool stuff coming. And let's see here. No, oh, that's right. There's a mission that wants me to take. I don't. Uh oh, the is the base under attack? Oh, the base is under attack. And I just switched someone with a shotgun. Um. 
get me over this. Um, yeah, Serbius well, just kind of comes under attack from time to time, especially if you have more survivors and are making more noise. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the big things that I'm running into um, in my game that I'm playing at home is that I've got I've built up all these really powerful facilities, but they all make noise when they're running. Like I've got the generator running all the time, so I have the benefits of power, and I've got a ton of survivors, um, and they just make noise all the time. And so I, I deal with these um, in invasions of zombies pretty frequently. A lot of times it'll happen while I'm away from base, and because I've got you know enough people and watchtowers and enough ammo lying around, um, my people can usually handle it in my absence. Yeah. But if you don't have that, you can you can suffer some bad consequences. Um, yeah, what we've got right now, um, oh, base menu. Uh, we're actually at an attack risk. We have, uh, um, whew, we have a lot of people who are um, contributing to uh, um, uh, the the noise just because we've got a whole bunch of people. Um, uh, like living here, um, as well as we have a bunch of facilities that, like you know, as you are well, rude, <laughs> rude. Um, as uh, people are interacting with their with your facilities, as they're like you know maintaining the forge, they're making noise, so you're just kind of constantly building up this threat level. Um, since I only have a few more minutes left, um, if I were to say uh, want to construct a bunch of soda can bombs, um, that oh, does that not make noise? I guess it's quite oh, it doesn't take very long. Is the problem? Uh, I think, I the things that take a long time, like oh, upgrades upgrading, upgrading. and and sort of like long term benefits, those are the things that will right. end up making a lot of noise. So yeah, um, bumping that up. Um, I'm currently in the process of upgrading, which like there's going to be people who are you know hammering on things in order to uh, try to upgrade that. So that makes extra noise. And then so we have uh, this wonderful gentleman here. Uh, so. Mad Gamer uh, California has got um, a question about trade. Uh, I was wondering, like, like so, how, how does trade work? Are you just are you bartering, trading items for items? Do you spend influence on things? Um, it's an influence cost. Yeah, influence is basically the currency of this world. You can sell luxury items, I think. Yeah. Right. So yeah, so there's cer there's certain items you can you can scavenge in the game where their only purpose is to be sold for influence. Um, and then you can sell other things that are valuable. A lot of times I'll sell like the guns that I don't need, or if I end up with too many backpacks, I'll just go on like a, uh, when a trader comes to town, I'll just load my character and their car up with backpacks and just take it out there and just sell everything. Cause you know, once I've picked a backpack for each character, I don't need, I don't need a lot of the extras. And thank us for playing State of Decay 2. Um, so it looks like we could probably get another one started. Uh, Josiah could be showing up any minute, but cool. uh, I've got about ten minutes left before I gotta get to my next thing. Okay, perfect. And if, even if you have to leave a little bit early, that's fine. I can I can I can roll with this until right. uh, Josiah shows up. Cool. All right. So, uh, All right. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna oh. actually try to complete one of these one of these missions instead of just kind of running off in a random direction. <laughs> uh, no one in particular on Mixer asks, uh, "What are the chances of you and another player having the same looking characters?" Um, we've got hundreds of characters in the game, and so if you if you play a lot, then I mean yeah, inevitably you'll probably see uh, very similar looking characters uh, because it's just it's just inevitable. This way, net random number generators work, right? Eventually, Box mines. <laughs> eventually something like that will happen, but it is pretty rare. Like uh, we've got enough characters in our random assortment that uh, th that. Typically, you know, when you bump into somebody, you're going to look different. I'm not too worried about it. Okay, where's the storage locker in this one? I never go out on the baseball field. Is it? Let's see here. Um, the the flare system where you call for help and like ask for public you know, volunteers to come into your game, I believe is usually on the radio menu, but it's probably disabled, disabled. for the demo. Um, I need that supply locker because that is where my... Is that the radio room? So English Bull asks, roughly how far into the story is this demo? It's really hard to say because how um, the story progresses, it's, it's extremely up to you and how you decide to play. This game, it's the story of this game feels more like something like, say, Alpha Centauri, uh, than than, than a, a traditional you know action adventure game with a linear story. It's much more like. There are ways you can end it, and there are things that can happen, you know, but it's not really about playing through a linear progression. It's about exploring and doing whatever you want. Uh, so these bases are kind of kitted out so that, so that people who are checking out the demo can see a lot of variety. Oh. Um, certainly Hello, our cars. That's Hello, a nice rare car. <laughs> so we're definitely, you know, so you're seeing some, some mid and late game content here. Uh, but it's hard to really place it relative to the story. It's, it's, it's very flexible. Okay, so... 
So the one thing that I will reluctantly admit is that uh, driving is generally better when you actually have analog controls over things. So okay, so you're, so you're switching, uh, switching to controller. You'll notice, by the way, that um, the UI instantly changed when you switched from controller to, uh, to mouse and keyboard. That's kind of how we prefer to do things around here. It's like if, if you've got both out on your desk, uh, you don't have to go through some elaborate procedure to switch control schemes. You just pick the thing up you're going to use, and everything changes. Can I drive through this? Can I, can I drive through this in my nice car? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, okay, oh, cool. we've gotten in an ugly zone there. Unfortunately, yeah, we can't really. You can get out though, I think. My car, my nice car, my nice car. I'm gonna have to. Blow and this up would my not nice be state of decay if you didn't uh, lose a car now and then. I'm gonna have to blow up my nice car, so nobody else can have it. Oh come on! I know you can catch on fire. Uh, Cy Snow is asking us about the release date, which we should be uh, we should be hitting that drum uh, more often than we are. Uh, so the game officially comes out May twenty second, uh, but if you pre order it uh, or if you get the ultimate edition, I think it was the ultimate edition, yeah. uh, then um, then you can you can actually play it four days early on May eighteenth. So we've got two release dates, just depending on how you want to buy it. Uh, also, because I'm the fire programmer, I need to show off. Uh, you can't set things underwater. On. What? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, was there some point in the game where you could? Yes, it used to be the case. So, uh, but it's been a few months. Um, but yeah, uh, explosives will do different things if they're underwater. Um, they'll certainly look different. Uh, sometimes they'll have like different gameplay effects too. Fire won't catch things on fire because you know you've got a Molotov fuse, but it'll just immediately get pulled out, uh, put out. Um, is this drivable? I need a new car. Uh, I think the white one is, yeah. is drivable. Uh, Das asks, uh, May 18th, what time? Uh, I think that that's a level of granularity that I don't think we Microsoft have a huge window standard into. standard time. <laughs> yeah, when it, whenever that typically happens, I'm not sure. Cool. Close to Alan. I'm coming, Alan. Uh, Han Solo Dolo, unfortunately, uh, I think the demo has a lot of those options disabled. Uh, he's asking if he could see the game with the HUD off. Uh, and I don't think we have those options available uh, to us right now. The settings... No, we don't yeah. have any of the uh, visibility options on. Yeah, so we can't really show you that right now, but uh, yeah, you can you can turn a ton of stuff off. Uh, that was actually one of the major bugs that I fixed. Um, <laughs> there were there were some issues, you know, just just standard. Oh, we're coming close to release, and let's make sure that we button up all the ends. Where occasionally, if you had the HUD off when you started the game, it would stay off for the rest of the game until you opened the map. Oh. Just. Uh, Captain right. Barbosa says he's planning on streaming the game on day one, so he actually it actually does matter to his schedule what time it comes out. Um, and unfortunately, I, I guess I'll just have to say I just don't have that answer for you. But uh, at some point closer to the time, we might be able to get answers like that. Uh, so I would definitely keep pinging us on Twitter, and uh, we might be able to get you more information on that at some point. Um, I mean, unless I believe that uh, one of our community managers is there in Mixer, maybe maybe uh, he knows the answer to that question. No one in particular says the Xbox store clock says 2 p.m., uh, but who knows? I, don't, I, I just, not, not saying anything about, uh, about the store in particular, but like any online store, usually this far in advance, uh, you can expect things to change a little bit by the time it actually gets to release. That's just my personal, I don't know anything specifically about our game on the Microsoft store, <laughs> but uh, that's just my typical rule of thumb. Cool. So, uh, Alan here, my new friend. Oh, I can't jump over that. Um, uh, wants me to go clear out an infestation, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Probably would have just followed me home either way. Uh, I had that option, just kind of refuse. But there's a shed. And the best part about sheds is that there's usually stuff in them. So... Uh... Estefaldo asks, do you think the Blood Plague is too easy to cure? Um, it just depends so much on how you play. I mean, that's the thing. So many things in State of Decay, it's really hard to say if it's too easy or too hard because there's been many parts of the game where I've been like, oh, this part's too easy, and someone's like, really? That destroys me every time. And it'll be vice versa. They'll have a thing that's super easy for them that, for me, is one of the big challenges of the game. 
So it's really hard to say whether any one aspect of it is, is too easy or too hard, but once we have a really large player base and people commenting to us, you know, on all of our, you know, social media options and stuff like that, we'd love to hear if you guys feel like certain parts of it are too easy or too hard, uh, because mm -hmm. we're gonna have lots of opportunities to update this game, add to this game, and if there are ways that we can make it, you know, make, make the difficulty, whoa, what is, oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't intend to do that. <laughs> so you set a bunch of mines and stepped on them. So yeah, uh, you got to be careful when you set mines. I thought that these were the remote detonating ones and not, oh! the, and not the motion triggers. I was going to open the door, lure them all out, and then blow them up one right after the other. <laughs> Well, hey, you did definitely demonstrate parts of the, uh, the uh, of the system, which is which is good. It's still <laughs> which worthwhile. Which is exactly what I intended to do. <laughs> yes, school is out. Uh, Bloody Sparta, you can't make more than one, settle more than one base on the same map. Uh, what you can do is you can have one base where your people live, and where, which is sort of your center of operations, and then um, you can settle outposts, which give you a wide variety of different benefits. Uh, yeah, this year is uh, one of the potential outposts, and if I've got time, I should have a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm gonna head over there. Yeah, I have exactly a couple of. Minutes. I'll show you exactly how this works. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, you can move from base to base while you're playing on the same map. So, so you know, if, if you're in one base and you get curious about another one, you can move, you know, whenever you want to, as long as you've got enough influence and enough people to, to manage the place. Cool. So we got this farmhouse here. Um, and once I finish exploring it and clearing out all the zombies, which, it looks pretty safe. It doesn't look that infested. Yeah. I like this place. He agrees with us. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, uh oh Oh, hey. Thanks, Alan. Friends got that covered. I'm happy and I think we are demonstrating that you can have characters in military fatigues. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so you got to go, oh, I think, um, upstairs in order upstairs? to finish clearing the place. Uh, where are the stairs? Uh, there's the, ah, the two left there, the ladder. All right, cool. Well, uh, site secured. Um, and one of the things that... Uh, one of the things that this space can do um, is provide us with... Oh come on! I think actually the preview when you when you're claiming will also tell you. Right. Oh, but you can see it. You can see it here on the map. You can too. see it on the map. So if you've scouted the location, um, uh, we've got. If you uh, go to like a cell tower or a water tower, anything sufficiently high up, uh, you can scout things that are nearby, um, and um, it'll tell you um, anything that is possible um, for you to get out of that thing, uh, such as oh, I've found a vehicle here. Oh, I found an outpost here. Um, so this outpost gives us some food. So uh, this costs me three hundred influence. Um, and takes up one of my okay, outpost slots. So uh, now I've got a food outpost, and if I go to my resource consumption, I've got a, f a food outpost that is giving me an extra three f uh, food per day. Granted, I'm still losing food because I've got a whole bunch of hungry people who just refuse to stop eating, um, but now I'm making some extra food for the next four seconds. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Sarah asks, uh, in regard to endless play, um, what is, uh, is there a difficulty ramp that, that sort of uh, that, that ramps up uh, as you're playing? There is definitely a difficulty ramp, but it's not, uh, they're asking specifically about one on the scale of breakdown. And, and we don't have a difficulty ramp that's on the scale of breakdown where right. it just gets insanely hard over the course of many campaigns over a long period of time. Right. Uh, we know that that was popular, though, and so it's definitely one of the things we keep in mind as we're thinking about, you know, ways to expand the game in the future. But for right now, we're mostly, you know, uh, we know that uh, a lot of people are going to be playing this for the very first time, and so we want to, you know, to come up with a nice, broad difficulty level that everyone can enjoy. Right. As the game progresses, as your community gets uh, stronger, as you start getting more influence, then we'll start throwing more freaks at you. Um, uh, I think I saw, like, two or three juggernauts at a time um, at one point when I had, like, a tremendous amount of influence built up at my base. <laughs> um, it can and, uh, it can get pretty difficult, but yeah. it starts off nice and easy. Um, I don't know if that difficulty carries between legacy. Uh, I don't think it does. Yeah, I think that as yeah. you, uh, it's basically it's per it's per community, and right. so uh, so you've got you know your, as your community as the characters in your community progress, uh, they we sort of keep track of how much progress you've made, mm -hmm. and that feeds into the difficulty level of the game. Right. Well, I think you have to go, but I do. thank you so much uh, for coming here and playing with us. Oh, thank you for and, having me. Uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'm going to go take over over there. All right, well, I'll try to get out of your way. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to have a little bit more trouble uh, keeping track of the chat while I'm playing, but I'll make this work. All right. Oh, how, wow, how is this uh, loose for my head? My head's way bigger than yours. Uh, that must have been very uncomfortable for you the entire time. 
I'm used to having tight headphones because, you know, <laughs> you've got to block that office noise somehow. Well, everybody, thank Jeff Salt uh, for being here. And uh, yeah, you have to lean really far in if you want to. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, all right. Anyway, um, go see if you can find Josiah because I think he might have lost track of time. Okay. Uh, so, in the meantime, let's press A to begin this demo again. Oh, here's Josiah. Josiah! Hey, you showed up yeah, just in time. I was just about to have to uh, start improvising here on my own. So here, you sneak by me here. You want to go around the other side? You I'll can step that. over the couch or you can do whatever you want. Um, I'm going to switch so we can actually see us both on the camera. Oh, Sorry. actually, before I do that, we got to introduce you. You are Josiah Colborn. You are a world builder. Como estas? <laughs> Como estan, whatever. Yeah, so... Um, Josiah, what do you actually do on the game? When we call you a world builder, what does that mean? Um, it means, uh, well, building the world. So, <laughs> exactly right. Sorry, I, I threw you yeah. a hardball there. Well, it's sort of a mix. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the idea of a world builder, it's kind of a mix between a, um, an environment artist and a level designer. So um, I don't spend a lot of time making props or... Uh, you know, creating textures or that kind of thing. I might do some of that. Yeah. I spend a lot of time figuring out how the map needs to be laid out so that it's interesting to navigate uh, and it looks good and um, that it meets all sorts of other fun standards. Anytime you, like, drive up over a rise and you see this beautiful vista laid out before you, like like some clever person wanted to make it look a certain way, that was what you were doing. Was <laughs> Yes, that's true. And at the same time, um, if you ever see a, uh, an alleyway between two uh, buildings... And something piques your interest to go and explore back there, and what you find is some treasure that's very interesting to you. That would also be part of my job. Yeah. So yeah. So basically, you know, we've got um, there's there's a lot of kind of s skill and discipline overlap between the art teams and the design teams at, at, at Undead Labs because we we got a lot of designers here, and we got a lot of artists here. But the world building it, it, it kind of straddles those two worlds a lot. Like you gotta have to have you have to have a lot of good instincts on many different sides of the equation. You know. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think um, uh, one of my philosophies about creative game development is that there's... Um, I just dove right into this one. Like, oh. I'm, I'm just going to speak hard. Go for it. Go for it. So, um, as I think that when it comes to a lot of artistic developers and any any developer with a technical skill of any kind, there's, there's a couple major factors that are going to be useful um, for building a game. And I split those personally into craftsmanship and creativity. Mm -hmm. um, so you can be a, a programmer that's a craftsman, uh, you know, who's just writes immaculate code. Uh, and you can be an artist who's a craftsman who is just super good at detailing every nut and bolt on, let's say, the back end of a tank. Um, but neither of those are synonymous with creativity. Uh, creativity, I think, lives in a parallel realm. And in gaming, you have to be good at both, usually. Yeah, and, and most people have some degree of both uh, when, when they're working in this kind of field. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. Um, and I, uh, I, I think m in most game companies, you have, to, you have to be a craftsman. And I think the bigger studios get, um, the more craftsmen you need in order to deliver on sort of the, the visual demands and the technical demands of gaming. Um, but uh, in order for each individual to creatively contribute to the overall product, I think you need craftsmen that are also creative. So a good blend of people is important. So I guess I guess that's a really roundabout way of saying I think it's normal for people <laughs> like me and for this industry to cre to create a blend of people like that. One thing I think is really interesting is you because you know you're not usually building and texturing specific props. You're arranging them in the world. Yeah. It, it's interesting to see some of the really like creative setups you guys will come up with. There's you know, some places in the map where there's stories being told and uh you know you can look at something and be like oh i can tell what happened here using usually just normal props that you that you have you got a big pile of them somewhere and you just put them in yeah. but the way that you arrange them will tell stories in interesting ways it won't just be boilerplate well here's a house yeah you know? i think that bethesda has done a really good job of exposing um how you can use uh i, I guess you could call them generic uh lists of props to tell unique stories that feel relatable to your average person and player that goes and discovers them. I remember reading dev blogs about Fallout 3 and um, then going and playing for myself and, and just keeping an eye out for the little stories that they would put here and there using 
something as simple as a uh, you know a sleeping bag and a proximity mine. You can um, <laughs> you can you can get an I you can just build an idea in the player's head about what they're um, seeing. And if I could make a connection to maybe um, authors like narrative mm -hmm. writers, um, in that they they use words to illustrate a scene, and there's a lot that they don't say that you fill in the blanks for yourself. I think we get a taste of that too in um, environmental storytelling, where we give you just enough to make up a story that's way more interesting than one we could write. <laughs> that's true, and it's funny. It's almost an I inverted because the author is saying all the words of the story, but leaving out a lot of the images. You're using, creating all of the images, but leaving out a lot of the words. Yeah. And in either way, the the player's filling in a lot of the gaps. Right. And we your imagination is always going to be more powerful than my craftsmanship. <laughs> oh yeah. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of very strategic leaving stuff out that we do on purpose because the thing in your brain is going to be better than the thing you know that we can put on the screen. Yeah. Uh, Hansel Ladol had a question for you. He was curious if there's a favorite place to explore, something he should look at, look for, that is like your favorite thing that, 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 that you contributed to, uh, the, or, or maybe it's something that somebody else contributed that you just really hmm. have a love for. The ma so in the map in general, uh, uh, yeah. something to be, that's good to explore? Because uh, uh, you, you spent a lot of your time in Drucker County, right? I did, yeah. That was, that. Uh, if any of these maps is my baby, it's that one. Although I've spent some time in all the maps, has have the other world, build, word, world builders. Yeah. Um, I yeah my uh, my sweet baby is Drucker, um, and I still love uh, playing in Drucker. I, I can like I don't want to I don't want to play <laughs> favorites, but I really I I love I prefer to be there. That's uh, what I've been playing at home. Oh really? Yeah, I've, I've been How's in Drucker. Your experience been? Uh, it's it's been great. Yeah, it's 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 really nicely kind of parceled out into these little um, clustered neighborhoods where I can be like okay. I've really mastered this area, and I'm going to move on to this area, this yeah. area. It's, it's, I, I like the sort of tight clusters with the uh, it's kind of long drives in between them. Yeah. Um, hmm. I, I, I want to answer the question. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to answer it, because the, <laughs> a lot of the things that motivate my exploration in this game are, are tied into you know, the community and what my community's needs are. Um, but whenever I get distracted exploring, it's usually because I'm in a city center, and you know our town center whatever you want to call it a cluster of practical sites <laughs> and i just find myself distracted and I, and like maybe i'll wander behind a strip mall and be like dude there's a ladder i wonder if there's anything on the roof <laughs> yeah. and it just pumps me up and i want to go check it out and even after having you know seen essentially all the maps in detail i still don't know what's going to be on that roof because I mean, either, I mean, the maps are big enough I may have forgotten, but also the loot system is dynamic enough so that I really can't guarantee what I'm going to get on that roof. Yeah, we actually have a question from Master Chief who's asking, will this map be ten times bigger than the first one? And uh, no, we, we, we kept the maps uh, roughly the same scale uh, as, in terms of just the amount of content that you're getting. Uh, the, the maps are roughly the same scale as the original game, but there are three of them. Uh, and each of them has its own character, its own, you know, feel to it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like you know, I'm sure it was ten times the amount of work. <laughs> yeah, no, that that I wouldn't be surprised by because you know we're also like we went up a level of detail and production values uh, from the previous game. You know, now that we can, and we're playing on, on on tougher hardware. You actually make a really good point because I was I was mostly teasing, um, and maybe if you factor in the um, year one survival edition, a lot of work went into that uh, into that first map. So. Um, so I wouldn't want to undercut how much work that map took. <laughs> yeah. But we are doing, I mean, th the game has increased in size in a number of ways. Yeah. Step on it already. And not just physical size. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. There's, there's sort of, there's size, there's breadth, and then there's size that's, you know, detail. Yeah. You know, how, how, how deep into the fractal you can look and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and still find, still find stuff, so. Yeah, and I think that, you know, just go, going off my gut here, I think that... Um, the original, or yeah, the, the first map in State of Decay, um, I just don't, I'm not sure if there's as many diverse um, groupings of sites as there are in our new maps. I think it, I think in general the variety, like alongside the road and stuff like that, I think we've been able to go into a little more detail due to our increase in manpower and development time. That, that might really be the case. The, um Oh, oh, so uh, Estefoldo asks, do you have any specific like inspirations, things that like that you looked at as you were as you were building, you know, Druck, uh, Drucker County or any of these other things that you worked on? Uh, so I'm the way I w I'm, I want to answer that question is that is being a lifelong gamer has been a huge inspiration for a ton of reasons. Um, but I'd say 
you know, every open world game I've ever played, including the first State of Decay, is a huge influence on me, the kinds of experiences I'm, that, I, that I made it my goal to provide. Um, so I, in my Gamma Sutra, in, or not my, our Gamma Sutra interview here at the, at the studio, we uh, had a nice interview with Gamma Sutra. Oh yeah, go look that up. Uh, I don't know what to search for, but probably Gamma, yeah. Gamma Sutra Undead Lab State of Decay 2. You'll yeah. find it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how much I can speak for the rest of the team, but I, I personally said in that article that one of my inspirations, as completely far off topic as it is to our game, was Breath of the Wild, just because of how they um, encouraged exploration in a way that I just didn't feel like other games had. Um, I think aesthetically, my um, my mis my mis nostalgic point of view on Red Dead Redemption mm. is was probably a big aesthetic uh, inspiration. Which I can see that because Red Dead Redemption take, sort of takes place in sort of a mountainous American West desert, mm -hmm. and Drucker County do ha does have a lot more of that vibe. Whereas you know this like here here we're in Meager Valley. This feels like maybe a uh, like a, a midwestern farming community. Drucker County feels more like it might be in like somewhere in Arizona or you know. Or, uh, or, 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 right. may, or maybe like eastern Washington, you know, that, that yes. sort of like deserty, mountainy sort of area. I think both are great references, Jeffrey. And, um, and especially the southern parts of Red Dead are that way. But there's so much variety in that game, game, that game too, that um, our more mountainous regions are reflective of, I, I would say, our other two maps um, reflect some of those qualities as well. From Red Dead. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm a little distracted talking. Oh I, no, I'm that's fine. A, I'm in a vicious battle. Yeah, I've uh, yeah, I I, I I kind of screwed you over a little bit. I put you in the position of having to do a lot of the talking. No, I'm enjoying myself. And I'll and also play in the game. I'll do my best to channel Brant, who also somehow juggles with. Oh my gosh, the dog or not? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> that's what Hold we needed on. right now. Hold on. Here, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Take, do sh showing one. off some of Jeff Salt's work here. <laughs> Okay, okay, we have one one more. Nope, we're out of pipe bombs, everyone. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then the demo oh, runs out. Awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> I actually haven't played the demo before. I've played, of course, a lot of the main game, but um, that was a blast. Are we going to do more? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead and just start right. again if you want to. Um, yeah. Dak and Black asks, is uh, multiplayer going to be up and running on the 18th? Yeah, uh, and, and, and you cited the reason why. You know, you're not really going to be dependent on us having a bunch of servers up and running or anything like that. Uh, the game's peer-to-peer, -peer, and so as long as there's people playing on Xbox Live or, you know, uh, via Windows 10, you'll be able to get into multiplayer with them uh, from on day one. <laughs> yeah, everyone's saying save by the bell. <laughs> I know, yeah. I was out of explosives, and I was dying. I think if that juggernaut would have grabbed me, I would have been certainly dead. I got lucky that I got to kill that feral before it killed me. Um, so no one in particular uh, wants to, to, to nail us to um, uh, deliver secret information. It says, uh, what are you guys working on now in terms of the final game? So, so right now, I mean, so, some of us have actually uh, started working on some of the DLC uh, that, that's going to come out after release. But a lot of us are still focused on, on getting the, the build shined up. The thing is, the way that it, that it works uh, is that, you know, each time you make a change to the game to fix a bug, you run the risk of introducing a new bug. Uh, and, and so you, at some point you have to just start winnowing down the kinds of things that you're fixing uh, in order to sort of keep, a, keep uh, control over that kind of like bug creep that can happen. And so right now, oh, holy crap, what is going on here? It's cool, I got this. <laughs> so right now, most of us uh, have a few, you know, a few bugs that we're working on in the, uh, you know, to, to try to get the, the final version of the game um, up and running, but we're really trying to slow it down so that you know we can get it completely stable and ready to go. So you guys have the best possible version of it. Uh, so that's kind of where we are. So um, we're getting so so close. We're so excited uh, for this game to finally be out and for us to be able to like share it with all you guys and have you. I want to get on Twitch and Mixer and watch you guys play this game. Uh, you know, rather than just having us do it. Though certainly, I think as soon as this comes out, I'm gonna be streaming this myself like every night, right? Because. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I think most of the games I've worked on, I went home and I tried to beat on my own time. And I'm lucky in that I've never had to work on a game that I just find detestable and I don't want to play <laughs> in my own time. Um, um, I... I've I've had some games that I was pretty sick of by the time yeah. uh, by the time I was through them, but uh, this is not one of them. This is actually one of the ones that I've been most excited to play myself uh, that I've ever worked on, and and that that for me that that really says a lot about what the team has achieved here. Yeah, you know? yeah, and the and the things that are unpredictable about this game, like I was talking about before with um, 
the question about, uh, you know, searching favorite areas to explore and all that. Oh my gosh, this person's in trouble. <laughs> it's like, I thought she's like standing up on the, on the pallet. She's like, hey, keep these guys away from me. That's what I'd do. Wait for somebody with a shotgun to come along. Uh, English Bull, we, uh, we hear you, and we'll, we'll, we'll definitely, one thing we'll definitely be doing is, is, is listening to, um, to the audience for the game and finding out what it is they're, they're interested in as we keep developing it, uh, post-release. Um, so we're, we're gonna, we're gonna be paying attention to what was working for you guys, what you guys wish was there, and, uh, we'll, you know, and it could be that what we actually need in this game is something you've never seen before, right? So it's not necessarily going to be, you know, the stuff that worked in the original game is exactly what we need to replicate in the sequel. The sequel's different in a lot of ways, and so it'll be a whole new challenge to figure out how to keep supporting this game after release and how to keep expanding it. Yeah. Um, those kinds of decisions, like those big creative decisions, are, are really difficult to... It's hard to know what the right answer is a lot of times because there's so many things you could do and you always have to ask yourself, well, is this the right game to do it in? Or, yeah. um, or should we double down on something the game is already good at? Yeah, should we, should we think of this as like, oh, this great idea we had, that should be you know, the fuel for some other game in the future yeah. that we make, you know, sometime down the line. Because this isn't, you know, hopefully this is not the last game we make. Uh, and we'll, <laughs> we'll have, still have some good ideas left for, for the future. Um, uh, Sukadog, uh, it's, it's Wonder Russell who's answering questions uh, in the Twitch chat. And I believe over on Mixer, uh, I think one of, our, uh, one of our other community managers has been poking in, poking their heads in over there now and then. Um, still have some here. But let's see here. Oh, there was a question I wanted to answer, and I lost track of what it was. Uh, oh, uh, Filthy Phil wonders, at, uh, nice name by the way, uh, if, uh, if we have any favorite zombie movies. I think for me, it's definitely Girl with All the Gifts. Uh, which came out between the two State of Decay, so it's a really recent one. But yeah. it's it's one that uh, that like the thing I love about it is just how close to despair it skirts the line, and the tiny little tiniest little modicum of hope that it that, that it gives you. It's like the the more despair you have, and the tinier the amount of of, of hope. It's almost like homeopathic medicine, where it's like <laughs> that's the most effective uh, for me. So yeah, I love it. That's really funny. Yeah, I think last time I was on the stream, we might have gotten that question as well, and that was like I don't know a year ago. Oh yeah, probably um, so. Which is so it's it's time for a refresher on what my favorite zombie movie was. <laughs> um, but I uh, I really can't help but love Warm Bodies. Um, oh it's, yeah, it's it's a it's a a much more optimistic movie, but it still starts you out in a place of deep despair, and then shows you like hope and recovery. Also, it's one that that my wife will watch with me. Um, she's not big in intense movies. Um, and that movie just has like a heart of gold, and so it, it, it helped her cross the threshold into a zombie film, you know. Yeah. So uh, it's getting to be past two o'clock, but I think we should we should maybe finish up this uh, session that you're playing in the demo, and then and then we'll we'll call it quits after that. I'm game. Yeah, five minutes. So yeah, so I'll try to keep try to keep up with the chat here. Um, <laughs> we got a lot of folks in Mixer who are uh, suggesting their favorite uh, their favorite movies: Dawn of the Dead. Land of the Dead, 28 Days Later, 28 Weeks Later. Yeah. Like I, Ravenous. I haven't so heard of good. Ravenous. I've never heard of that either. Also, Zombieland. That, that, Zombieland was actually an inspiration of the original State of Decay. There's a lot of references to that in our achievements Loader. and stuff like that. I think, I think four of the achievements in the Year One Survival Edition are named after, like, rules uh, from Zombieland. Oh, yeah, like the double tap and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, the, like, the car I mean, the re I think Zombieland is the reason why our first skill is called Cardio. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Naturally, yeah. Uh, we did we ever get a like a Bill Murray reference in there? Like uh, we don't. I don't think we have a Bill Murray cameo in the game. Yeah. So that would have been hilarious uh, and expensive uh, when he sued us. <laughs> That's a great point. So, oh, everything is awesome. Thanks for <laughs> the compliment. Um, oh, oh, Mad Gamer. I did mean to answer your question. Um, it says, uh, "Will loot be in trunks?" Of abandoned vehicles and yes actually so the drivable vehicles will often have awesome stuff in their trunks and even the vehicles that are like discarded by the side of the road and that are not drivable um a lot of them whoa high centered i made a, I made a poor choice <laughs> I made a poor choice so a lot of these uh, a lot of those vehicles um they are containers themselves in fact even like if you see like some of the abandoned trailers by the side of the road a lot of them are contain containers you can search all that stuff and get loot Filthy Phil says Day of the Dead 1985 is probably his favorite. Man, I really, I can't help but love the classics. Because um, just, when you have those ones that define the genre, there's, you go back there and you may have watched a ton of zombie movies, and you're like, eh, I'm used to all the cliches by now. But then you go watch the classics and you're like, 
Oh, I didn't know there were still new ideas in this movie that haven't really been exploited the way you know when a when a genre hits cliche level, you you kind of feel like you've seen it all. But those those movies still have a lot to offer, I think. Uh, Estefolda wonders if all backpacks are blue. Nope, that's just a random number generator <laughs> giving us a string of. I, I wasn't paying attention. I guess we must have had a string of blue backpacks. Oh, are you sure? I thought B's B for backpack was also blue. B for blue. Yeah, yeah that's they both have that's, that's how you guys choose colors, right? Yeah. Artists like yeah, it's just whatever. Right. With the letters, it's an English language it's, it's, specific connection. This game is specifically for synesthetes only. <laughs> <laughs> right. And all of our music is mariachi because M. Uh, is music with. <laughs> there we go. Um, let's see here. Oh, so Garlic Rip says, all we've seen in every demo is blue backpacks. Okay, so what's probably happening is we probably have something in the demo that is grabbing a specific backpack and giving it to the main character. Um, and that was just to make sure you had a good enough backpack uh, in the demo. We just grabbed one that we knew was good and gave it to you. In the real game, every character starts out with a different backpack. They're, they're like, I'll often spend way too long sitting at my supply locker trying to get the perfect backpack to match my character's outfit. Um, and <laughs> maybe I shouldn't admit that I do that. But That's they, funny. Yeah, yeah. I totally do that. I, I've never heard anybody admit they do that. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are going after a plague heart and getting um, ganked by a zombie at the same time. Oh! Oh, doom! Okay. I don't think I've... I think this thing should be dead soon. So uh, Black Ops is asking, what are the different backpack sizes? So um, I've... I'm not going to promise the exact number of slots in them because I think I've forgotten, but there is sort of a standard backpack size, there's a small backpack size, and a large backpack size. And then the small and the large also each come in special lighter versions uh, so that you can get you can get a wet backpack that weighs practically nothing if you're willing to grab the smallest kind. Um, and so, which is good because, you know, your, your stamina will last a lot longer um, if, you're, if you're carrying a light load. And so a lot of times, like, if I'm going to go out and do something that's very combat heavy, um, and I want to have a lot of stamina, a lot of times I'll load my character up with the lightest possible backpack and just fill that backpack up with combat gear, run out there, and, I'll, and it, it'll, it's like having twice as much stamina. Um, but my favorite backpack for most characters is the hiking backpack, which is like, it's the largest size, but it's also, um, it's weight's distributed, so it's effectively um, uh, less heavy uh, than most other backpacks. Um, and so, so you can carry a lot of stuff, and it's not, you're not going to get um, encumbered as quickly. Alfred, I'm sorry I keep uh, skipping your question. Uh, Alfred's been asking, you know, uh, about new freak types. And uh, I think uh, Jeff, Jeff Strain set uh, a precedent for us, and we're not really talking about the details of, of the zombies. Um, but uh, we're definitely, the main thing we're showing off is that you can definitely, we definitely got all the classics from the original back in the game. Um, and the newest, th the, the big thing that, that we've added to the enemy list, um, there's two big things we've added to the enemy list that, that we've already shown off. One is Plague Zombies and the Plague Hearts, which is brand new. And the other one is being able to fight humans, which I think we managed not to do this entire stream. Oh, we, I told somebody in Discord we were going to do it, and we just never got around to it. We just got distracted. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't secretly avoiding it. Yeah, I know. Neither was I. I just yeah. wasn't really thinking about it. But So that is um, State of Decay 2, guys. And uh, we're out of time. we got to go back and do some work. That's right. But... Uh, it was great having y'all here, and it's great having you here, Josiah. Thanks for coming in and talking to us. That yeah, was a lot of fun. Anytime. Yeah, totally. Um, so remember, it's less than a month until uh, the game comes out. So uh, May eighteenth, if you pre-order the uh, the uh, ultimate edition, or May twenty second, if uh, if you buy regular type, which is only thirty dollars. So yeah. I hope you guys will come in and join us, and uh, you know, I'd love to see you guys' streams once the game yeah. comes out. And I, just on a personal note, I'm very excited about the ultimate edition. Uh, the fact that it comes in uh, under the cost of other AAA games on launch day <laughs> for the Ultimate Edition is so is such a relief compared to the you know the hundred ninety dollar Ultimate <laughs> Editions that you can get these days. So, yeah, totally. I don't know. In my opinion, it's a great deal, and I have no bias at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're just we're just glad that you know we'll be able to get a larger audience of people playing this game because it's so affordable. Like, yeah. you know, we'll we'll get to we'll get more feedback, we'll get more you know uh, input, and we'll be able to make the game even better uh, and, and and support it for a longer period of time. You know. With a nice big community playing yeah. it, so it's yeah. good. Anyway, thank you all, uh, and we are gonna be out of here. But um, yeah, see you later.